You mentioned the IPCC. Why aren't they talking about this even more and taking even more aggressive action if you agree with that they should be? Well, IPCC, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, is not charged with taking actions. They're charged with informing the governments about the status of our knowledge of climate change and even scenarios, what would be the effect of alternative scenarios in the future. Uh, the, the actions are, need to be taken by the governments. Um, now, scientists have a big responsibility to make sure the governments understand uh, what's happening and understand the fact that the system is uh, a very dangerous one because of its delayed response and the fact that the climate system has amplifying feedbacks. So that means there's the danger of losing control of the system and we really need to make sure that the policymakers understand that. Um, I think that that IPCC has done a reasonably good job of doing that. It, their reports are uh, uh, huge and, and uh, not always in a language that the layperson or the politician can easily understand. But eventually the uh, implications do come out, but we're just not getting government actions to, in response to the warnings that have now become uh, quite clear. And I think perhaps we scientists should be a little more uh, vocal in, in uh, letting the public know that the governments are not doing practically anything to really make a difference. Um, that's, uh, but nevertheless, the, I would put the major uh, burden is on the governments. But then, in turn, if the governments are not doing their job, then the public has got to understand this and, uh, you know, use the democratic process to try to uh, alter the policies. And we're at a point where, um, Maybe that will begin to happen. Finally, just very recently, some young people have uh, protested, you know, staying home from school, uh, demonstrating in some of the capitals around the world. So maybe we're on, on the verge of uh, putting pressure on, enough pressure on governments to actually get some action, but that remains to be seen. Tell me how you see the next 30 years going if nothing changes in, in the way the world produces greenhouse gases. Well, how will things go if we have 30 more years of business as usual? Then what would happen is we would lock in uh, dramatic changes. Uh, we've already locked in additional change just because of the inertia of the system, the fact that uh, there's a delayed response, the fact that the planet is out of energy balance, there's more energy coming in from the sun than there is heat radiated to space. So that means that more warming of the ocean is locked in and the climate consequences uh, of that are locked in. But if we do 30 more years of business as usual, the amount that will be locked in is so great that uh, the, the consequences uh, would be much more severe than if we would begin to take action soon. I think that it's still possible to avoid multimeter sea level rise. <clears throat> but if we go 30 more years with business as usual, I don't see how you could do that because we're already at more than one degree uh, global warming and we've got locked in several tenths of a degree additional so that sort of the best that's possible if we really got uh, going right now would be to 
have a maximum of the order of one and a half degrees Celsius. But if you go another 30 years, then you're talking, you know, two and a half or three degrees locked in, and that makes it much warmer than the Eemian. The Eemian was the last inter prior interglacial period. We're already, we have already increased temperature outside the range of the Holocene, which is the current interglacial period that has existed for more than 10,000 years and which civilization developed in because it was a stable climate. Sea level became stable and we could uh, establish cities and, and uh, civilization developed in that period. But if you go back to the Eemian, it was about a degree warmer and sea level was six to nine meters higher, which is 20 to 30 feet. That we can't set in motion the processes that will take us there because then sea level it would not immediately go to such high level, but it would start rising and it would be unstoppable. You know, and so our coastal cities would be doomed. And so we can't we can't pass that point where the the ice sheets are certain to go unstable. It's, a, it's hard to say how fast they can go unstable. You know, in our paper a couple years ago, we concluded that if you stay on business as usual, it could be as fast as 50 to 150 years. In fact, it, we argue that it would be that fast that you would get to multimeter sea level rise. So that's, we don't want to do that. Uh, that's, uh, I think, the biggest threat. Uh, but there are numerous other impacts because civilization adapted to the climate, the stable climate of the Holocene, and we're now leaving that period because of the human effects.